Hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your currency recap for July 29th. Corey here with you. So we're always going to take a look at meaningful news. We're going to look at what's moving in the currency markets and crypto. Um, and of course, narrow that down to the point where we have good trade setups. Here's why this is going to move up or down and how we're going to trade that. That is our search. So let's jump into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So if there was one word to describe the markets today, I think that word would be quiet. It was a very, very quiet day, perhaps the calm before the storm. We know that the Fed meeting is coming out on Wednesday, and this could be a little bit of that. I'd expect kind of a calm tomorrow as well, the Tuesday before a Fed meeting on Wednesday. That can be quiet. Japanese yen has been on this upward phase, and I've touched on this a bit in these currency recaps. This is such a heavily traded currency from a carry trade perspective. So many people have been short because the Japanese central bank has been devaluing that currency for years on end, and it has potential to unwind like you cannot believe. Could the Japanese yen potentially go up another 10, 15, 20%? In the coming years, absolutely, positively. Um, so probably not going to do that in the short term, of course, but over time, it has the potential to unwind in dramatic fashion. So that bears some watching. And it also speaks to this risk-off environment. Tech stocks continue to sell off. Apple launches its new AI phone. Uh, watching the tech sector and watching the Japanese yen has been interesting because they have moved in exact opposite directions. When the yen has been rallying higher, those tech names, large cap tech has been selling off. Now, like I said, pretty quiet day. There's not a whole lot going on. Aussie a little bit higher, US dollar a little higher, Swiss franc and euro a little bit more on the downside. But all of those percentage moves are rounding errors. That's just not a lot of movement in currencies. Really quiet day across the board. Crypto up a couple of percent, oil down a percent, everything else pretty much flat. Now if we dig a little bit below the surface with crypto, it was interesting because Bitcoin is lagging and yet Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, the other cryptocurrencies are trading higher you're going to see that when we get to velocity scores certainly velocity and momentum standpoint bitcoin is the weakest and that doesn't generally happen um, unless there's something very specific happening in the crypto markets but it is happening now and i think we'll we'll talk about the whys behind that our market outlook is ultimately turning a little bit more negative We've started to break some moving averages. We've started to trend lower. I would think that this next week or so will be a little bit of a digestion period where we had that first wave of selling. You'll probably get a little choppiness here and maybe even a little bit more upside. The way I laid it out uh, in my mind is that we get a little attempt at a sell-off and it reverses back up. And then we get a little bit further push up here. So do I think there's a little more to go on the upside? Yeah, probably up underneath this moving average, kind of this gap area. But ultimately, I suspect we'll make a lower high and that there's more downside to come. I think we are going from a more bullish to bearish environment. And I think more of these things have a way to unwind. Now, we are jam-packed with possible things that can move the markets. Usually, if you're looking at things at Forex Factory that are in the red, it would not be this many, but that's where we find ourselves. So Monday, there was nothing, and then it's packed for the next four. So tomorrow night, you get CPI out of Australia, and then overnight on Tuesday, you get the Bank of Japan. 
we come into Wednesday, we know there's the Fed meeting, and that is the big event for the week. Then we've got the Bank of England overnight. And, of course, you know, that can move markets as well. If you're trading that, the expectations are for a rate cut of 25 basis points. Whereas the U.S. and Japan are expected to hold, Bank of England is expected to cut. We've got some CPI out of the that could move the Swiss franc, and then we've got non-farm payrolls coming out on Friday. So there's a lot going on in currencies, and this is why I said if there's a word to describe it, it's quiet today, but this is probably a little bit of a calm before the storm. There should be some volatility coming. Now, as we look at currency analysis, there's just not anything moving right here right now. So we want to wait for that velocity to change. We want to wait for those things to turn. If there's anything that's really underperforming right now, it's Bitcoin. And that's about it. Now, why, if you look at crypto, would these other cryptocurrencies been catch, be catching a bit and Bitcoin be lagging? I think the reason is political. Trump basically came out as an advocate for cryptocurrency and arguing that that it's, you know, strategic and that we may need to build a reserve and so on and so forth. Now, you might look at that and say, well, that's good for Bitcoin. Well, probably, maybe, but it's better for the other cryptocurrencies. If if crypto becomes mainstream, the reality is, is there's not enough Bitcoin and there never can be enough for the entire world and for it to make a meaningful difference. If you look at it from the standpoint of that they can't print more and more of it, well, that's part of what people love about it. It also means there's just not enough of it for it to actually become a currency that can replace something as big and widespread. I mean, think of how many U.S. dollars are changing hands every day. It just really cannot replace that. But if it becomes mainstream, the argument, in essence, would be that these other cryptos could be uh, an important piece of crypto becoming mainstream. So I think it makes sense that people would be bidding up some of these others that are a little bit more, let's call them fringe cryptocurrencies, whereas Bitcoin is perceived to be uh, the safe haven area and the most stable. Um, if we are, in fact, getting mass adoption, one would think that these other cryptos have more upside potential because of that. Now, that's just my opinion, my kind of take on why we're seeing Bitcoin underperform the others. Let's look at some charts of interest. Really, there's one that I'm watching here pretty closely in the next day or two, and that's oil. Oil's been on a big sell-off. We've touched on that. It's closing in on the low end of the range. You can say, well, we're in a big upward channel or ascending triangle or something. But ultimately, we need to hold at this trend line. I think my bet would be that we do, that there will be at least a temporary bounce from that lower end of the range, from that trend line. So watch for oil to have a little bit more weakness here. Maybe go down, touch that trend line, and then we'll bounce would be my viewpoint. Now, if and when we bounce that bounce will be telling. Uh, if it bounces weekly and then comes back again to the trend line, you'll probably break it and go lower. I think this is a trend line that could hold for the foreseeable future, but as oil goes, so can go some of the commodity currencies. Canada can, uh, Canadian dollar can be influenced, so it's a chart worth watching. No real velocity out there right now, but we're going to continue to look for opportunities because this week there is a lot on the economic side that can move markets with the headlining event being the Fed meeting on Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed today's currency recap. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next time.